Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Is AI going to take over the world? Is our existence in threat because of some kind of general artificial intelligence that is going to rule our lives? So this might sound a bit like a ridiculous question to some people. And yeah, it might sound a little bit over the top, right? However, there are actually many people right now in the world debating this question. And we have some high profile people like Elon Musk or the late Stephen Hawking expressing their opinions about the dangers of general artificial intelligence. So what is really the case here? What is really happening? So in this episode, we're going to discuss what's all this hype about and what we should really expect from the future. So the first thing to understand about AI is that it doesn't really exist as people think it exists right now. What I mean by that is that the original vision behind artificial intelligence was to recreate human intelligence inside the machine. So this vision has not materialized yet. We do have intelligent algorithms. We do have intelligent algorithms, but these algorithms, they are very smart, but in a very narrow sense. So they're very good in doing very particular things. So imagine, for example, if you met, you know, an individual who was very, very charismatic in, I don't know, playing the piano, for example, but this individual wasn't able to do anything else. You know, wasn't able, I don't know, to wash the dishes or drive a car or even read, you know, or speak. So you'd say that this individual probably suffers, unfortunately, from some sort of, you know, mental disability. Yeah. So our current intelligent algorithms are exactly like that. They might be very good in detecting faces, detecting expressions or emotions or uh, we have another algorithm to recommend products to people. However, they're not like intelligent in the broad sense of the term. And actually, one of the holy grails of AI, of machine learning research, of data science, is to come up with true general artificial intelligence. But how can we do that? Well, the answer is no one really knows. Some people believe that we're eventually going to reach this point once we get more computational power, once we get more data. I mean, this opinion, you know, it has its merits. I mean, for example, deep learning is a very fascinating piece of technology. I mean, the core of deep learning was essentially devised in the 80s. So the difference between the 80s and now, and the reason that in the 80s, we couldn't do the things we do now, like have good translation interfaces, or, you know, algorithms like, you know, that can drive vehicles was because we didn't have enough data or enough computational resources. Also, there have been some, you know, new methods that have been devised, some new mathematical methods, but it's not just that. Some would argue that the increase in data and computational capabilities was at least 50% of the equation. So it's very likely that by grinding, by adding more and more resources into the problem, we might be able to reach a point where we create general AI this way. However, we can't really know. Nevertheless, most experts believe that at the current pace of progress that we're experiencing, we're going to reach this point sooner or later. And when we reach this point, should we be afraid, yes or no? Well, I think there are two points to talk about here. Well, first of all, I don't think we should really be afraid of general AI in the same way that we shouldn't be afraid of nuclear energy. Yeah, so there have been nuclear bombs in the past, nuclear disasters, unfortunately. But in the end of the day, it's a technology 
that is bounded within a space. Yeah, so it's our choice as to how we're going to use it. So it's not like the Terminator movies where an AI can, you know, overtake a defense system and attack humanity. A general AI, we could choose to bound it within, you know, a single machine or, or a cloud or whatever. So we don't have to give it control of our resources or anything like that. So that's one point. So the second point is that the main risk is not so much around general AI, but automation. And automation is already happening. Yeah, so automation, you know, across uh, jobs from call centers to drivers. Yeah, so I was reading a recent report by PwC. This report was saying that I think by 2040, a large number of jobs, like percent, that like 30 or 40% is going to be automated. So I'm not sure if this prediction is going to end up being right, but what I do know is that, yes, many jobs will be automated, blue collar jobs, white collar jobs. And in order to automate a job, you don't really need general AI. All you need is what we currently have. You know, machine learning is used in order to automate tasks and jobs. So in the near future, we're going to see some economic disruption taking place because of this. And I'm not sure if the current systems we have in place on a political level, on an economic level, they are ready to deal with this kind of disruption. I don't know. I don't know. However, while, you know, people like Elon Musk warn us of some kind of impending disaster because of some Terminator-like AI or something like that, the real danger lies in the economic disruption we're going to witness within the next five to 10 years coming from automation. So anyway, this is my opinion about the subject. I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you have any comments or any thoughts. Drop me a message on thedatascientist.com and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.